Hello, this is George Pruitt, and I am going to make a quick video uh, for YouTube uh, where I'm going to introduce my uh, second edition of the Trend Following Systems book. Um, I wrote a second edition because I have streamlined the Trading Simula 18 software. Uh, that is the software that comes along with the book, um, and, and it's used to test all the algorithms that's in the book, all the trend following algorithms. Uh, and I wanted to explain to you real quick what makes Trading Simula 18 so special. At least it's special to me. Uh, I like it because um, unlike other testing platforms, it spans uh, a portfolio of uh, markets horizontally. Uh, and I'll explain that to you a little bit more in detail in just a few seconds. Uh, instead of going through, uh, for example, if you have a workspace with TradeStation, um, and you're not using Portfolio Maestro, uh, you have to apply the, um, the uh, strategy to each chart in the workspace. And then if you want to combine the equity of the entire workspace as a portfolio, it can be a chore. Uh, and there's several programs out there that can help you do that. Um, and they are, there are other programs like Ami Broker <clears throat> and, and Maestro, Portfolio Maestro, um, that do combined equity and you can play all kinds of games with, um, you know, um, reinvestments of profits, uh, skip this market if the risk is too great on a portfolio basis and things like that. And you've also got trading blocks and then you've got Mechanica that do the same thing. I didn't know how those worked. So I wanted to create my own universe and understand exactly what was going on behind the scenes. And I think it's it's a good product because it's it's not super fast uh, and it's written in Python, which is really a cool language and it's a very easy language to learn. And again, the reason I did that, I've, I wrote this book and also uh, Trading Simula 18 is because one of my favorite, one of my favorite uh, quotes by Knuth, Donnie, Donald Knuth is, I think people who write programs do have at least a glimmer of extra insight into the nature of God because creating a program often means that you have, you have to create a small universe. And I've done that with trading simula 18. Uh, and I like to share that. Uh, and I think it's a very powerful tool and it's at a reasonable price because you get it when you, when you purchase one of the books. Uh, now the book is either you can get the paperback for uh, 49 uh, or you can get the Kindle for 29. Uh, I've also, they've created a new um, format. It's a hardcover, but it's not really like a hardcover. It's more like a textbook. And here's a picture of the hardcover. I'm going to refer to the second edition as the blue book uh, because that's what the paperback and the Kindle version looks like. Uh, and um, the hardcover looks a little different. Um, I couldn't use the same imagery uh, as I did for the paperback and the Kindle version. I probably could have if I would have figured out how to manipulate the cover uh, DPI, uh, but since I couldn't, I didn't want to spend the time on it. I don't know. If, I don't know how many people buy the hardcover of the book, anyways. Uh, but I think it looks pretty cool. The hardcover I created. But today, um, I wanted to get into um, Trading Simulator 18 as an introduction, and also show you how I've actually streamlined uh, the code. It used to be that each module was almost 300 lines of code, and and you really only need to pay attention to about 15 to 20 percent of those lines of code and i've cut that in half now um, it did come at a cost because it's a little bit slower uh, but at the same time you can use the what i call the uh, the quick or the slow streamlined version or the expanded quick version you can use either versions in this uh, in my trading simula 18. today i'm going over i'm going to go over the slow easy version uh, and I'm also going to show you why I think Trading Simulator 18 is so powerful. So I'm going to jump into that real quick. We're going to use a, we're going to look at a trading strategy that was um, very popular um, because it was one of uh, the strategies that Michael Cavell, Mike Cavell, uh, revealed in his trend following book. Um, that book sold for you know quite a bit of money. I mean, sold a bunch of copies. I'm sure Mike made a lot of money off of that too, um, because it was really an interesting read because he got to interview a lot of the turtles and a lot of the people that believe in trend following that managed a tremendous amount of money. Uh, 
the reason I chose this system for this uh, demo is I wanted to show you how Mike described the money management perspective, Mike Cavell, and how I programmed the money management uh, by using the dynamic portfolio value at the end of each day. So that's where the horizontal spanning uh, comes in uh, when I do the portfolio analysis. Um, I've written several back testers um, and worked with several back testers. I helped develop Excalibur when I worked at Futures Truth. And what we did, we went through the history of each market from top to bottom, and then we'd go to the next market, top to bottom, next market, top to bottom, next market, top to bottom. And we were storing all the daily equities. Uh, and then at the end, we'd create a combined equity curve by um, sampling each of the daily equities and just basically combining those. And we could create the equity curve and then we could analyze the equity curve uh, to determine max drawdown, you know, other performance metrics. Now, the only problem is we could not dynamically modify the position sizing based on the end of day portfolio value on a dynamic basis. Say we ran the test for 10 years and say, okay, at the end of every year, we wanted to look at the portfolio equity and reinvest the profits and then change our position size based on that. Well, we couldn't do that. So I decided to go with Trading Simula 18 that we would do that, that you could pretend you were a portfolio manager at the end of each day and make a trading decision based on the portfolio equity at that time. Uh, now, I also made it to, you can do, you can, you can analyze all kinds of things at the end of the day. You can read the ADX value of the individual markets at the end of the day. You can look at the list of trades for each individual market at the end of the day. Say you've had like 25 trades and you want to say, well, what's the average trade? And if it's a certain amount or above, you can say, um, I want to actually double my position size or I want to stop trading. I want to eliminate that out of the portfolio until the next month or two months or whatever. And in the book, I tell you how to do that type of stuff. Um, Keith Fitchin was very, uh, was, was, is, wrote a very popular book and is, and I hope is, I'm not sure, but, uh, a technician that, uh, uh had a lot of, a lot of people respected him, uh, because he would do what I call the two in, in a group, meaning that instead of trading five currencies in a sector, you pick only two and you take the first two that trigger. And that way, you don't have to trade the entire sector, which may overweight your portfolio. You're trading only a small portion of that uh, sector. And so you'd say, I want to pick two of the first uh, markets in each sector and just trade that and ignore the rest. So that's, I wanted that capability as well, and I did put that in Trading Simulator 18. So you have that capability as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at this strategy, and you're going to see the new interface. Uh, all the new modules in this easy slow version, and I call it slow because it's it's about it's about half as fast as the um, the bloated um, version where I don't hide the code. Um, I hide the code so you don't see it in a string uh, that is executable. So I pack all this 50, 60 lines of code into one string variable, and then I tell Python to execute that string, and it does it. But by doing that. It has to parse that string and then it has to execute that string. So it slows it down considerably. So all the new algorithms, modules, or, or strategy modules, uh, they look very similar. At the top, you've got your parameters. Okay, we're going to call this system. System name is going to be TF for trend following, Cavell underscore 1R. And the 1R means reverse, refactored version. Uh, and this is going to, I just called it a demo. And I'm going to start out at $250,000. My start test date will be 2010, January 1st. And we'll run through the data, whatever's on the computer. Uh, and uh, we're going to charge zero commission. Uh, the beauty with Trading Simula 18 as well um, is that you can do a dynamic commission. It can be a uh, function of the daily equity volatility. If you got a wide range day, 
there's a possibility you might have been slipped more because there's much there's much more volatility involved. So you can change that. But in this case, we're just going to change it. We're going to save it to zero. Uh, nowadays, instead of you having to remember how to instantiate um, different class-based indicators. Uh, and if you read my book, you'll understand why some indicators are class-based. Uh, don't let the words class scare you because you don't need to know that in, unless you really want to get into it. Um, but I handle that now for you in this section here. If you, you want to use the ADX or the Laguerre RSI, Parabolic Stochastic RSI, MACD, Dominant Cycle, and I have a couple more um, cycle, I mean the class-based indicators, you turn them on here. Now, if you're using a simple moving average uh, or you're doing um, like a Bollinger Band or a Keltner, that, those are not class-based. And I explain why they're not in the book. Uh, because basically, you pass it all the information on that day and it can generate the, uh, the, re the return values or the indicators. Uh, it doesn't have to remember. It doesn't have to have a memory. Uh, RSI and M MACD are keying off the prior bar's value. So you have to use a class. I don't want to get into that right now. I do in the book, um, but it's it's not complicated at all. It sounds complicated. So now, if you want to use ADX, and I just I just turned that to true. I'm not going to use it. We're just going to use a simple Donchian system here. Uh, if you use ADX, here's all the include code. You can ignore all this stuff. Uh, ignore all this stuff here. My market list. This is where you where you call. Um, the Windows Manager uh, open file menu dialog and I've differentiated if I'm trading commodities or stocks and if it's a, not a stock then it's going to be a commodity and the reason I did that is because I had some overlap in names uh, between uh, uh, future symbols and um, stock symbols and the computer was getting confused is, is this a commodity or is this a stock so here I've created this this variable called is stock equals false. If it's true, then you can only you can only test with 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 stocks. Uh, if false, then only test with futures. That's up to you. Ex execute these uh, includes. Ignore, ignore, ignore. I've got some um, list here. This is only for demonstration purposes. I do uh, explain these further in the book. For right now, we're going to ignore all this stuff. We don't need it right now. And here is where. I determine if you're using ADX, if you've set ADX equal to true, then I go ahead and build a list of ADX classes and I instantiate, which basically I generate, I create. And I have a class, an ADX class for every market in the portfolio. So if I've got 30 markets, I have 30 classes. And each class keeps track of the ADX values. Okay, so. Uh, I do all this for you now. You don't have to worry about doing this yourself. And I would advise you, if you get into Trading Simulator 18 and Python and testing, you learn a little bit more about that. I do disclose that in the book as well. Okay, I also do sector analysis. It's built in now. That was an option in the first book. Um, you could do sector analysis or you, or you, or you didn't have to. Uh, I've created um, this um, predefined sectors. There's seven of them. Uh, and there's, I've got them set up for CSI data, for Pinnacle data, and for Quandal data. The Quandal data is the data you get with the book. And they stopped updating the data mid-2021. So um, the data that I send you or you get with the book is uh, based on that Quandal data. But I've been able to cobble um, some up-to-date data and uh, use that and the old data and used a, a continuous contract adjustment, a Panama adjustment to create the data. So the data that I provide uh, is, is really good to play with, uh, to test with, to learn how to use uh, Trading Simulator 18. But if you really wanna do an in-depth analysis and you've got real money on a trading algorithm, you, you, you better buy some good data and you can get that data either from Pinnacle or you can get it from CSI uh, or Norgate. Uh, CME sells it as well, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Um, I like Pinnacle because it's it's great data, very reasonably priced. I bought a um, what he calls the continuous link contract database for ninety nine dollars. Very deep history, and I update the data every day uh, for twenty dollars a month. So um, and and of course I use CSI data for thirty years as well. Futures Truth uses CSI data for years, um, and those guys do an awesome job as well. And they've got some really cool software that goes along with it. Um, I've never used Norgate, but I've heard Norgate is very good as well. Okay, 
So I'm going to create a sector analysis. I got seven sectors. I'm going to define the sector universe as Quandl. Okay. And what that does, each data feed has a different symbology. Pinnacle has a, a, a very unusual symbology. They use the letter Z a lot, like ZN for, uh, or ZU for crude oil. And that's a combined contract that's combined pit session and combined electronic market data. So instead of having two symbols, they got one symbol. Okay, so we can skip a lot of this stuff. And I tell you, do not change co code below. Assign list based on markets, mark, the market monitor here. I explain, I explain what market monitor is in the book. Right now we can skip it. Let's get down to the nitty gritty of the, of the program, what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna define the long, short, exit, short. I'm sorry, define long, short, exit, long, exit, short levels. Mind your indentation. Uh, that's the one thing I don't like about Python is um, the indentation. Uh, if, if you're using like an if-then construct or a for loop, the data that's controlled by that if-then construct or that for loop uh, needs to be indented for spaces. In other languages such as C or, or, um, or, or easy language, you would use a begin and end for easy language or a bracket. Um, I think it's a curly bracket. I can't remember my C any longer. Uh, or it's a French bracket, I can't remember. But but they, and you didn't have to indent, you just put it inside of a bracket. Here, uh, you gotta be very careful because if you get your indentations wrong, then sometimes it'll cause a syntax error and it will cause syntax error if it's wrong. Sometimes it's hard to find. So that's my that's the weakness of Python, I think. I don't like their indentation, uh, the necessity of indentation. And also, uh, a lot of people, um, purist, uh, they want you to do things in a Pythonic way, P-Y-T-H-O-N-I-C. Um, it's just they think that uh, there's a certain syntax um, that helps with the semantics of the language. Um, I kind of ignore it. Uh, I've been programming for so long in different languages. Uh, I like Python because it does a lot of neat stuff. But it looks a like, lot like basic. So uh, it's a very easy language to pick up. Uh, I, try to, I try to ignore some of the more sophisticated Python libraries. Um, I only have to, you only have to include one library. That's the OpenPy Excel, which will allow Trading Simulate output data as Excel files. Uh, but the beauty of Trading Simulate 18 is I load all the data into lists. If you want to use NumPy, or if you want to use SciPy or any of these sophisticated libraries, you can pull those in and just adapt them to use the data that I pull in uh, into my list. So it's a very adaptable to using much more sophisticated machine learning technology and everything like that. But if you don't want any of that stuff and you just want to go and, and take advantage of the capabilities of training Simula 18, you can just ignore all those other libraries. Okay, so let's get down to it. Uh, I'm going to define my buy level as the highest high, my high. The reason I use my high is because, you know, we have the, we have the word open in, in stocks and commodities. Open is the opening price or open tick. Well, open in programming languages means a lot of different stuff. It could be open file. It could be open window, open all kinds of crazy stuff. So you can never really use the word open. So uh, I could have used H-I-L-O, but I just like using the word my. So my high means all the highs of the history, my lows is all the lows of the history, and my opens, all the opens of the history, and my closes is all the close of the history of the data. I'm gonna look at 89 day, days back, and I'm gonna pull the highest high starting from yesterday. And I'm gonna pull the lowest low for the short level. And my long exit is gonna be the lowest low of 13 bars or days back starting yesterday. The short exit is just the opposite, 13 day high. 13 days highest high. Okay, now this is where Cavell describes his money management scheme. It's very simple, uh, but if you were to look at it, you would say, well, how would I program something like that? Well, this is how you do it. Basically, he takes the average true range of 15 bars he uses that in his override uh, position sizing calculation. So my ATR, average true range, 
is s average, which is simple average. That's one of my function calls. And you know all, you will get all the functions there in, in my indicator uh, file or indicator.py. Uh, so I'm going to take my ATR, which is a 15-day ATR. Position size 1. We're only going to discuss position size 1 here because that's the long side. And we're only going to discuss the long side uh, entries and exits. So position size 1, let's undo what I just did, is equal to 2% times the daily portfolio combined equity which means I'm reinvesting every day if I make a profit or if the profit, if I start going below um, C level, uh, it'll start reducing my position sizing. So as the daily, hopefully the daily equity will grow, uh, I'm gonna take 2% of that. That's gonna be my risk value. And I'm gonna divide that, and that is dollars. 2% times dollars is dollars. And I'm gonna take the buy level and I'm going to subtract the long exit. So it's the highest high of 89 days minus the lowest low the last 13 days. Whatever that displacement is, I'm going to multiply it by my big point value to give me dollars. So dollars divided by dollars will give us a factor, a numerical factor. It's going to be something like 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 15, whatever. Okay. And then I go down here. And so I've got position size 1 calculated. We're going to ignore position size two because that's for the short side. I'm going to calculate position size based off of the ATR. I'm going to take my 2% of my daily combined e portfolio equity and I'm going to multiply, divide it by two times ATR. Remember dollars times two times ATR times dollars. I mean, um, yeah, big point value. So you got dollars divided by dollars, which will give you a factor. Now I'm only going to take the, I'm going to take the smallest of those two values. I'm going to take the smaller of the uh, position size one and position size ATR. Um, because the system, as Cavell described it, um, it was kind of risk averse. Uh, so it didn't want to go crazy with position sizing. Um, you know, if that range, the buy to long exit uh, was tiny, then uh, you would have a huge position size. So he said, okay, if that size is smaller than two ATR, uh, we're going to expand it out to two ATR to keep things from getting really crazy. Okay. And I do make sure position size one is at least one contract. So I take the maximum of the calculated position size one and one, whichever is larger. Now out of 10 times it's going to be position size. Sometimes it's, it's less than one. Uh, so then it becomes one. Okay. So let's see, how do we buy and sell short? Uh, how do we buy and how do we long, how do we do a long exit in trading simula 18? Well, I force you as the programmer to test the today's high because we're sitting on today's close. So I can go back retroactively and say, I should have been filled today. Okay. I'm a portfolio manager. Uh, I'm looking at my buy levels. I'm looking at the high of the day. And I said, oh, I should have gone long at such and such price. And that's basically what you're doing here. You're saying if my high of the current bar, and uh, this is a new thing, you can put D here for day, today. Uh, if you said D1, that would be yesterday. So we're going to do my high D. If it's greater than or equal to my buy level, which is a stop, uh, and it's got to be greater than or equal to uh, because you can buy the high of the day, and a lot of people do buy the high of the day. And I'm not currently long. MP does not equal one. That's an exclamation equal sign. That means not long or not um, equal to in Python. Then I'm going to set my price to either the open of the current bar, if you had a gap up above your buy level, or the buy level. One of the two. I'm going to give it a trade name. In this case, I called it TF Cavell B for buy. And my position size is going to be position size one, whatever it's calculated as. And then I'm going to do my long exit. I'm going to say if I'm long, MP equals equals, that's the, um, that's the comparison equals, uh, not the assignment equal. Assignment is just one equal sign. The comparison uh, equals uh, or Boolean is double equal signs. If I am long and my low of the current bar is less than or equal to my long exit, and I've been in the trade for at least, uh, at least a day, then I'm going to go ahead and get out. Now I've got to, te I tested that. Now I'm forcing, I'm, I'm the portfolio manager and I'm looking at the low of the day and I'm looking at my long exit price. Oh, I got filled there. I actually got filled there. So then I, I tell the price to be equal to, did I have a gap down below my long exit? If I did, then I would get filled at the open. 
But if I didn't, I would get the long exit. And that's what this code's doing here. I give it the trade name, num shares, and I use the, the word num shares. Uh, you could say num cons. I think I have that in there as well. But stick with num shares throughout the book because that's what I've done. Uh, I'm going to assign num shares to the current number of shares because I want to get out of every position that I have on. If I have eight contracts, I want to liquidate eight contracts. Okay, so that's basically it. And you have sh your short side here. And then, and I'm printing some stuff out as you'll see in a second. I That's it. That's all the code. So as you can tell, it's very streamlined and it's very simple to use. Uh, conceptually, uh, you really don't know what's going on behind the scenes, and I wanted to keep it that way. Uh, it looks top-down uh, as as you program, as, as a programming paradigm, uh, but it really isn't top-down. It's horizontal because I'm, I, I encounter a day of data, and I run through the entire portfolio for that one day. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. When we start this thing running, let me get to the top here because I printed some stuff out. Uh, when you run it, it loads all the data, every bit of data into, into, his, into the memory of the computer. And that does make it a little faster because you're not having to access the disk. Uh, if you had a, a static drive, um, a, so, I'm sorry, solid state drive. I don't know why I said static. A solid state drive, uh, then it would be super fast. But I don't have one in this computer. So I go ahead and load all the data into memory. And then I manipulate it. I put it in a huge matrix. Okay. And then I can traipse, I can, I, can, I can go across that, or span, I guess is the best word, way to say it. I can span that matrix and set it down through history and then over one and then down through history for the second market, over one, down through the history for the third market. I can start on the first row thinking of it like an Excel workbook. I can start on row one and go through all the columns and then go to row two and go all through the columns. And each column has been rep is, is, it represents a different market. So for example, on the first day of our history that we're testing, uh, here is what I do. On January 4th, 2010, per market is zero. Python is zero based. I go ahead and analyze crude oil. My buy level is 129.43. Uh, my ATR in dollars is $1982, $1982. My position size one it will be equal to one. Since my first day in the history, my combined portfolio equity is $250,000, which is our net capital value. So we go through there and we calculate all that. And sometimes we take a trade and sometimes we don't. It determines, you know, did we, did we penetrate our buy level or did we penetrate a short level? Uh, the next day comes up, and undoubtedly we did have a buy because if you look at if you look at uh, the portfolio equity, it changed, went up one hundred thirty four dollars. Okay, position size basically stays the same. I should have showed you this one right here. Um, the position size is a function of the ATR or the, the distance between the long and short. I mean the long entry and long exit or short entry and short exit in this case we're trading we're going to be trading two hogs two live ho lean hogs not live lean uh, and uh, versus one of the rest of the things now each day we run through all the markets see this is all for january 6th we run through all the markets there's our portfolio combined equity it's it that's the day before value so you can make a decision based on that you can feed that back into your equation so the portfolio is staying basically fixed because we're not really growing that much so let's go down let's get down to something with some meat to it let's go where the portfolio equity is really increasing and we can see how that changes the um, position sizing the system didn't do too good to start off because we we started in 2010 kind of a dull time Let's go to, let's go, let's go down to, oh, oh, we jumped up really quick there. Take a look at this. We must have had a big trade. What is this? Something happened. When we went from $250,000, we jumped up to 280. I'm looking at this number here. 297, there's 310, 316, 323. We must have hit a trend. Some market hit a trend. Could have been a couple of markets. But anyways, 
the the portfolio isn't changing dramatically yet. We're still trading just uh, one one unit. Here we got two units on of the uh, T note. Let's get down a little further where the equity really does increase some. This is near the end. Okay, here we go. This is nice. This is uh, July twenty second, twenty twenty. Uh, this is after the uh, pandemic, uh, so uh, the equity did jump tremendously because of the rise in crude oil, probably. Um, and we took some, we took, we, we caught that. The volatility in crude oil is very low, but because it kept just going up, it wasn't much movement, just straight up. So what we're going to do here on this day, we're going to trade based on the portfolio equity. We're going to trade three contracts of crude oil. We're going to trade three contracts of euro currency. We're going to trade one contract of gold. And as you can tell, the ATR value for gold is quite high. Uh, I think a lot of people were scared during this time period. So uh, the fear or greed is reflected in the price of gold, as we all know. Um, we're going to trade uh, just one coffee. We're going to trade just one natural gas. And I think I, I'm trading a big natural gas or a mini natural gas. I can't even remember what the size of natural gas is anymore. We're going to trade five soybeans. Uh, soybeans prices were depressed there for a while, um, so but as you know, in the last two years, soybeans have really in lumber and all those other markets have really taken off. Uh, we're going to trade nine sugar. Uh, we're going to trade one silver, which makes sense. It's a big contract, and we're going to try trade twelve T notes. Volatility must be very low in the T notes at this time period. So basically, you can see how the portfolio is changing dynamically. Here's a here's a 15 uh, T note allocation uh, based on our volatility and the amount of money we have in our account, and that's the beauty of trading Simula 18 is that it takes all that into consideration. And in the book, I call it the omniscient effect, uh, and I give you four ex examples or omnipotent, maybe omnipotent is the better word, omni. I call it omni. Uh, of what it knows before each subsequent trading day or what you can extract from each market on each trading day. You can look at each market's equity. You can look at each market's ADX value. You can look at the history, the percent wins of each market, and then make an educated decision um, on how many positions you want, on, want to put on the following day or the following market open. So... That is what's really cool about Trading Simulate 18. And now I have made it a lot simpler, at least I think I have, um, to, to program it. Some of the stuff where, like, for example, Keith Fitchens in in a group, in meaning like the number, a number, in a group, uh, is, is, is not easy to program. And I will be get, giving a much more examples. I've had people buy the books. Says, well, George, I don't fully understand how you're doing this. It works. Uh, your examples, but how did you do this? I'm going to be starting doing some more videos on Trading Simula 18 because I love it so much. Uh, and I spent a lot of time working on it. Uh, but but Keith's idea, and I'll give it real quick, is he said, oh, instead of trading five or six markets in each sector, which could get very expensive, if you have a small account, you can only trade one or two markets, but you want diversification, so you want to trade each each sector, but you only want to trade the first one or two markets in that sector, each sector, or you want to trade the first two markets with the lowest risk in each sector. Okay. You can do that with trading simula 18. It's really cool. Okay. So let's take a look at the results of this system. This is using portfolio money management and real quick here. Uh, if you just, just to give you an idea of how this system is done over the last four years, I do each sector. Uh, here is the currency. There's only one euro currency. Uh, last four years, euro currency hasn't done too much until recently. Um, in energies, crude and natural gas, take a look at that. Last four years, that thing really took off. Uh, this is kind of a um, pseudo graphic representation of the equity curve just for the past four years. It's a snapshot, uh, but I think it's really cool if you if you if you want to know. Well, let's see how how these things have done here soybeans look at soybeans it's, it's done extremely well lately and so we get down here let's look at the composite i break it down on a monthly basis i give you all kinds of reports as you know uh, i give you Monte carlo analysis i give you start trade drawdown analysis 
a lot of stuff in there. Um, this system uh, did fairly well. Um, it made uh, half a million dollars over the past, uh, what, 12 years um, using money management. Drawdown's pretty steep because what happens is uh, volatility uh, compresses. You put on a huge amount of contracts. Then volatility expands. You get stopped out. So uh, that's called a fixed fractional approach. Fixed fractional works when it it works great when it does work. It can be very difficult when you're in a drawdown. So sometimes you got to use a pseudo fixed fractional approach. So uh, that's what it tells you. Uh, when you had when you had this drawdown, it was 18.3 percent of your equity at that time, which isn't which isn't too bad. I mean, if 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 my drawdown is only 18 percent of my equity curve, I can continue trading. If it's like 80 percent of my equity curve at that time, I can't continue trading. The average drawdown is only 59,700, and I had 505 trades. And so that's Trading Simula 18 refactored, and you get that when you get the second edition of the book. Now, if you have just recently purchased the first edition, um, I was hoping that Amazon could do something where if you had purchased it within the last three or four months, the first edition, then they would let you download the, the, the second edition, but you can't do that with Amazon. So if you bought the uh, first edition, if you provide proof that you've purchased it, either the Kindle version or the paperback, let me know. I'll send you a, um, I'll send you a, um, a PDF of the new version. If you want a new hard copy, uh, either paperback or hardcover, I'll have to charge extra for that because I have to cover the cost of shipping and handling and also the production cost uh, that Amazon charges me to print the books. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. Uh, and uh, I think Trading Simulate Team, uh, there's a lot of Python backtesters out there. They seem to be a little bit more geared toward the, um, the machine learning uh, approach to trading. Um, this is more of the expert system uh, using algorithms that have you know been proven uh, over time. Um, and it's more of a using Python, uh, not to pull all the libraries in and apply all these sophisticated algorithms to it, but just to program a trading algorithm, a simple trading algorithm. Okay, if you have any questions, just email me, george.p.pruitt at gmail, and I'll be talking to you soon. Thank you.